Now boarding, the official boarding area podcast would like to welcome aboard all listeners. This nonstop service includes interviews, reviews, and insights from our talented crew of bloggers. Episode number five is now boarding. Joining Captain Ed Pizza in the cockpit today is Dominic Pirelli of the short final. Make sure those tray tables are stowed, your seats are in the upright position. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Now Boarding Podcast, the official podcast of Boarding Area. This week I've got Dominic Perilli with me from the short final, and we're going to be going through some of his favorite places to travel, uh, you know, how he got into the game, and his recent graduation from travel update to boarding area. Dominic, thanks for being on with us. Thanks for having me. So this is our first time meeting. We're hanging out in Philadelphia, which, as I found out as part of a conference this week, that this is actually Dominic's hometown, has been for— Great city. <laughs> Unless you're a New York fan. Great football team. Uh, this year, yes. Um, and so we're, we're lucky enough to be in uh, downtown Philly, and uh, a friend of the show uh, named Alex who runs a, a co-working and podcasting facility called Indie Hall right in downtown Philadelphia was nice enough to loan us his studio. Uh, if you want, you can find him at Coworking Weekly and Stacking the Bricks. Those are his two podcasts. At any rate, he gave us a nice quiet place for Dominic and I to get together and talk about uh, travel, which, as you guys know, I love to talk about. But today we're going to find out about Dominic. And uh, I want to get started, uh, you know, with some pretty basic stuff uh, in terms of, you know, how did you, uh, how did you develop your love for travel? Yeah. So when I was a young kid, my dad would travel a lot for work. I uh, worked for the government, and and every every year or so, every couple of years, they would have an annual conference um, and bring you know in people from across the country. And my dad, you know, would kind of make a vacation out of it, and he would you know bring along my mother, my mom, my sister, and I. Uh, we would get together and we would go to various destinations, Orlando, uh, California, Nevada, Arizona. Um, and as a young kid, it was just pretty awesome to see these different places and, and kind of experience new new cities. Um, I'd say my first real experience with big time travel was in 2005. Um, as part of a church group, I had attended World Youth Day in Cologne, Germany. Uh, my dad and I went out there. And it's, it's, it's just a gathering, a pilgrimage of over a million Catholics from around the world. Um, you know, I have to be honest, when I was a young kid, I just saw it as, as a free trip to Germany. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, um, I wanted to just kind of go and experience a new city and new, new country. Um, so we went out there and, you know, it was really just an awesome time. And when I was in high school, I took a trip to Italy. It was a 14-day uh, tour of Italy with my high school Italian class, and you know, I went to an all-boys high school. So if you can imagine, you know, a bunch of high school boys in a town or in Italy, it's uh, it's pretty, yeah, That's it's a fun. good time. So <laughs> I bet it was. And Italy is one of my favorite places to visit to the point of I've passed up other destinations to go back to Italy again. So we definitely, uh, on top of sharing uh, names with vowels and consonants and all kinds of weird <laughs> places, we both share a love of Italy. That's right. Yeah, great city um, or great great country. Um, on, on my blog, I actually have a couple of posts up there. I'm going to have some more coming out about my recent trip to Italy. So. Look yeah, out for that. I, I just saw your post on uh, different pizzas from different regions, and the, it's it's a little bit sad and a, and a little bit happy in that my daughter um, will only eat pizza more in Italy, and when we're back in the States, she just says it's just not as good. So She's she smart. Yeah, but it makes it tough to feed her at birthday parties <laughs> and stuff like that. It's like the, the staple food. Yeah, yeah, crowd pleaser. Yeah, and my, my dad was the same way. He, he he traveled for work, and so we, we got to go along on some of those trips, and that was how I got uh, bitten early on. Um, I'm curious, and you know, this since this is our first time meeting, I don't know the answers to a lot of these. I'm really not leading you on these questions. Um, I know you started out on Travel Update, and I followed you there before you moved to Boarding Area. Uh, for those that don't know, Travel Update is a collection of bloggers that blog periodically about travel. There's a bunch of great personalities there, and uh, Dominic is the first to, uh, you know, quote unquote, graduate from travel update to boarding area um, but what made you want to start blogging about your travel yeah so actually when I was in high school I I would blog and write um, about sports and you know I I wrote for the bleacher report uh, which w at that time wasn't really legitimate 
sports site. Um, you know, there was kind of a run, you know running joke around the, the mainstream sports media that Bleacher Report was more so a slideshow site. Uh, you know, top top fifty best players of the, you know the century. Uh, right. But now it's definitely m- more legitimate. Um, so that's really where my love of writing started. Um, and then you know, as I got older, I you know I had all these experiences through my business travel as well. Um, and I wanted to share them and kind of have a place to put everything down so that my family and friends could also learn and kind of follow me along on this journey. Um, that's kind of the way I see I see my blog as more so of a learning process for everyone. Yeah, yeah. And do you consider um, do you consider yourself more of a business traveler or more of a leisure traveler? Uh, that depends, I would say, on my level of business travel that particular year. So... Last year, I was in L.A. for about nine or ten months, uh, back and forth from Philly to L.A. every week. Um, so definitely didn't have much time for pleasure travel. Uh, but recently, this past, I'd say, seven months or so, I've been local. So I've used all those points and miles that I earned to go you know, to Dublin, to Italy. I'm going to L.A. again for leisure uh, yeah. You know, coming up here in a couple of months. So, yeah. We'll get into your favorites a little bit further in the episode, but I'm going to guess if Philly LAX was a common run for you that you did a lot of American flying last year. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. on that those beautiful uh, old U.S. Airways planes. So, oh, yeah, good times. Those old Airbuses are good times. Uh, those old U.S. Airways Airbuses are rough, and, and I wouldn't say. I mean, there are some fellow bloggers that, that comment on how they're rough up front, but they're rough pretty much from front to back. Yeah. Those old ones, I can probably tell you the exact seats that you want to get in coach if you want to have the optimal leg room because they have no seat in front of you. Right. And they still have a window. So yeah. I don't I don't actually remember them right now, but yeah. Yeah, no, there are there are a couple of, you know, better spots in the configuration, but I um I you know, that that part of what got me away from a flying American, I used to fly them a bunch, was just uh, they, they, those were the consistent plane for Charlotte Denver, which is a common route for me in Charlotte, Las Vegas, and I just just got tired of that plane. What are you on now? Uh, mostly United, um, but I mean, you know, uh, for the probably for the same reason you picked Philly uh, American Airlines for Philly LAX, they you know that's the most efficient routing for most of my flights. I live near Washington Dulles. Cool. Awesome. So, given your time in Italy and then the business travel to LA, um, you know, what would you say are um, the areas that you feel most comfortable talking about areas that you might consider yourself an expert in where you could help folks? Uh, it's a funny story. So I actually had a little bit, a little bit of a, an imposter syndrome, I guess, when I first started blogging. Um, I think some people have that, but I just realized that others can write about points and miles a lot better than I can, um, in certain areas, you know, redeeming miles, um, earning miles. So I really enjoy kind of the, those nondescript stories. Um, and if you look at my blog, you'll notice you know, I have some things like how to get a flight delay letter for your compensation request, uh, through your credit card. Um, you know, how to, and we'll touch on this after about the gasoline story. Yeah. Um, but how to, you know, what you should look out for when you're renting a car in Europe, things like that, that aren't really covered, you know, by the other blogs. Um, I think they do just a great job of covering the other stuff. Um, so I'll focus in on that on the stuff that isn't, you know, covered as much. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I did uh, get to read both of those posts recently. We will be talking about the, the his his experience with European gasoline stations on the Miles to Go podcast yep. shortly. Uh, we're going to step aside for a quick break. When we get back, we're going to dive in a little bit deeper on Dominic's travel and get to a few lightning questions on some of his favorite things to do. We'll be right back on the Now Boarding Podcast. The Now Boarding Podcast is brought to you in part by Norwegian Air. Norwegian is one of the fastest growing airlines in the world. The low-cost carrier is based in Europe and continues to connect cities that have never been connected before. Their most recent flights include nonstop service from Florida to Rome, Madrid, and Stockholm. They've also launched new service from Montreal to the Caribbean and from the Toronto area to Dublin. With a fleet of brand new 787 and 737 MAX airplanes, they're making the world affordable for thousands of travelers. Welcome back to the Now Boarding Podcast. I've got Dominic Perilli with me from the short final. Uh, Dominic, how long have you been blogging? About two years now. Two years. And uh, you just moved up from 
uh, travel update to boarding area, right? That's right, back in May. And were you blogging before you were on travel update, or was that the first place you started blogging? That was the first place I started. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what your first post was? Oh, I don't, actually. Oh, man. It, Way to it, put it, him on the spot, Ed. It actually, I actually do remember it. I think it was a Philadelphia-related post. Oh, really? I think it was... About sandwiches. Okay. Yeah. See, I can relate to that. Philly does have good sandwiches, but let's let's be clear. I mean, they, <laughs> these are definitely a regional thing. I mean, I don't know what a hero is, so. I, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. But I'm not one of those guys that puts lettuce and tomato on his cheesesteak either, to be honest. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I don't do that either. <laughs> so uh, so what? Um, where have you been traveling lately? What are some of the recent trips you've taken? Uh, so in February, we did a long weekend in Dublin. Um, that's my first time in Ireland. So just a great experience, great place to go. If anyone's out there and it's, and it's thinking about going, go, it's awesome. Um, then we went to Italy for two weeks and then we have LA planned in about a month, then Disney. And then I don't know where else. Disney world or Disneyland? Disney world. Yeah. One of my favorite places. And and by the way, folks, you know, I know you'll you if you're reading boarding area, you'll hear all the, the different folks say how easy it is to travel someplace quickly. But it, it really even though it doesn't sound like uh, something that's achievable, especially with the price of low cost airfare, you really can go to Dublin for a long weekend like Dominic did. Okay. That's not a hard thing to do. Yeah, I think we got an airfare of about four hundred bucks round trip, leaving on a Wednesday night, coming back Monday. Yeah. So but it was good. I think there's one other lesson in there too that I think a lot of us understand in the travel world is that you know people say, "Well, yeah, what can you get accomplished in three days in Dublin?" And my answer is always the same: I can get three days worth of stuff accomplished in That's Dublin right. in three days. And three you know, days of Guinness. Yeah, maybe I don't get everything, but sure. I can go back. Yeah, it was actually we were probably there I think four days, and we almost thought that it was a little bit too long. Really interesting. So yeah. Yeah, I've been to Dublin. It, it, it could be, although there's some stuff on the outskirts of town, but there's exactly. also so much of uh, so much else of Ireland to see. For sure. Yeah. So, um, so you mentioned that you've got Disney World coming up. Any place that's on your list of of places that you want to go but just haven't gotten booked yet that you think is on the horizon? So, recently, I've been dying to go to Oman, and ah. I quite honestly don't know why. Uh, but I've just been seeing pictures and just and just hearing about how great it is, mm-hmm. and you know it definitely appeals to me. I want to go somewhere in the you know in the Middle East, um, and Oman seems like a pretty cool landing spot. Yeah, I have not been yet. You'll have to let me know if you go for sure. Yeah, and so folks have a good idea of uh, what sorts of airlines and hotels you're traveling on. What sort of status you have? What, do you have any uh, airline elite status right now? I don't know. At the height of my ouch business travel, yeah, tell me about it. Height of the business travels, I had executive platinum on American, uh, but I've been local for yep. for the past year, or so lost that. It was a tough, tough day. Yeah, you know? I bet it's 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 definitely a lot easier to lose a top tier status like that nowadays than it used to be when you get eight system wide upgrades and all that other good stuff. But yes, yeah, but there there certainly is still a, a noticeable difference. So what about ho- hotel status? Um, I have gold on SPG and by extension Marriott as well. Right. Um, so I'm I'm definitely a Starwood guy. Um, you know now Marriott as well. But um, you know back in the day I used to have platinum status on Starwood, platinum Alito Marriott. Mm-hmm. So. so given that you had those statuses, are you when you go on a vacation, are you more likely to stay in a hotel, do Airbnb, try to rent an apartment? Uh, typically, I'd say hotel. Uh, but recently. You know, in Dublin, we did Airbnb, and it was just a great experience. Uh, when I was in Italy one night, we did an Airbnb, too, and it was, I mean, I'm all about now, is the price worth it? Um, how is the how is the place we're staying? If we're going to do Airbnb, is the place nice? Is it in a safe area? If it's in a safe area and it's a nice place and it's cheap, I'll be happy to do it. Yeah. yeah. You really have some of those amenities that you don't, you don't typically get in a hotel. Um, you have laundry if they have a washer dryer in the unit. Um, things like that, kitchen. So, yeah. Yeah, I definitely see some value in it. I'm still in that crowd of hesitant to want to stay in a house, not sure if the, you know, the the, the amenities I'm looking for are going to be there when I get there. Sure. You know, what happens if the owner doesn't give me access to the house? And I, I know those are probably monster under the bed fears, but they're still the fears I have. Yeah, no, it's a you know, definitely a valid point. I'd say it also depends on where I'm going to. If it's some place where, 
I don't necessarily want to be venturing around in a neighborhood to find the owner and to be waiting outside until sure. they let me in. I'll just go with a hotel. So. Yeah, and I guess some of it would be native language. Do you speak Italian? I can understand it. My girlfriend's okay. fluent, though, so okay. so that's definitely a huge help. Um, yeah. yeah. So renting a renting an Airbnb in Italy and having to communicate with a host was less of an obstacle for you than it might be for someone else. Exactly right. Yep. And so um, sort of shifting gears back over to this continent, is uh, this a first trip to Disney World for you, or have you been before? No, I've been ma- many times, probably a dozen or so times. Um, I love it. Me you too. Know, even as a high school kid, mm-hmm. my buddies and I, we did a road trip uh, you know, right before graduation. It's kind of a funny place to go, but... Uh, yeah, and you know, a heck just, of a long road trip, too. Yep, yep, like 15 hours each way. Yeah. Uh, but it was a great time. We love Disney. It's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, do you normally stay on site when you go to Disney, or do you normally stay somewhere off site? Uh, typically on site, uh, but we have at work, we have our annual conference in Orlando, mm-hmm. and it's always at the Hilton Buena Vista Palace, uh, which is now part of the Fast Pass and Extra Magic. Yep, yeah. and it's 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 a great hotel. So if anyone's out there, you know, you have Hilton points. Um, Definitely look into that because it's a great hotel and it's right across the street from Disney Springs. You can literally yep. walk there. So great hotel. Awesome. Side note for listeners, you may see a guest post from Dominic on Pizza in Motion sometime soon about the Hilton Buena Vista because I've been looking for somebody to review one of cool. those shoulder properties and talk about the amenities you get and is it worth it um, given the fast pass and extra magic windows. Yep. I can say that the pool has a lazy river. So if you're into that, uh, who, great option is, who isn't into a lazy river? That's like saying that you don't want whipped cream on top of an ice cream sundae. How about how about pineapple on pizza? <sighs> <laughs> See, I'm a purist. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a pepperoni guy, sausage. I definitely I, expected more of a strong reaction out of you. Uh, well, it's, it's, it, we don't have an explicit label on the podcast on, on <laughs> iTunes, and we'd like to keep it that way. So X-rated. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, as a guy who owned a pizzeria, I am much more of a purist with my pizza toppings. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay. I did, and on the Jersey Shore, so not far from here. All right, all but, right. Uh, and there was occasionally a shrimp or a mussel that would find its way onto one of our pizzas because it was a Jersey Shore. But that's crowd pleaser. But right, but yeah, but always under always under yeah. duress. Cool. We'll have to talk about that in a little bit. We will have to talk about that offline. Maybe with some beers involved. <laughs> right. Well, we're going to step aside one more time before we hit Dominic with some lightning questions on some of his favorite things to do. We'll be right back on the Now Boarding Podcast. The Now Boarding Podcast is brought to you in part by No Jet Lag. Don't let jet lag get you down. There are flight crews, sports teams, and business executives all around the world that sing the praises of No Jet Lag. No Jet Lag is the leader in jet lag management for the last 25 years. Don't let jet lag spoil your next trip. Visit NoJetLag.com to get yours today. We're back to wrap up this week's episode of the Now Boarding Podcast with Dominic Perilli of The Short Final. Our lightning questions to kick us on out of here. Uh, Coolest destination that you've visited so far? Favorite place to go? I'd say Venice for sure. God. That's a great answer. There are so many people I know the first time I went to Italy that told me I shouldn't spend a lot of time in Venice because I wouldn't like it, and they're wrong. I think if you go in the summer, it, the canals tend to smell, and the tourists are there. But I went in, in November, and I'd say perfect time. I've been there both times, mm-hmm. in the summer me too. and the fall. And I love the fall. I mean, it's just it's just a cool city, you know? It Where is. else can you see streets and businesses and people living life and there's no cars. It's it's just incredible. It's cool. Yeah, and I'd argue that New York smells in the summertime too, but I still love going there when it's warm. I think, you know, ideally the best way in my opinion to get a a, 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 a appreciation of Venice is get as far away from the Grand Canal as you can. I I'd, I'd agree with that 100%. Restaurants, shows, or re, sorry, shows, restaurants, uh, shops, all that stuff, the there's just so much culture when you move a little bit further away. Right. And that cliche, you know, get lost in Venice. That's that's legit. Like, just it get is. lost in Venice. It it's is. It's pretty cool. And this podcast is not about me, but I will say that we, we actually, one of our trips, we took our kids over by the Freedom Bridge, had lunch, and said, okay, there's the sun. Our hotel is in the direction of the sun. You lead us back. And they got lost for two hours, wandering around the city, and loved it. That's great. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's a great place. So uh, we talked a little bit about Oman being on your list of places you want to go to. <laughs> What's another place that you're really dreaming to go to? Uh, Tokyo. And I'm currently in the process of accruing enough miles to fly business because I refuse to fly economy it's a long out there. Flight. I'm six foot three and myself and economy seats 
don't get along, put it that way. Especially not for 14 hours. Right, yes. Yeah, uh, Tokyo is such a great city, especially if you like uh, sushi. Yeah, and I was listening to episode one with Gilbert, and, uh, you know, I was just so jealous. Uh, you know, I really... Oh, yeah. He's got, great perspe- he's got a great perspective. He's got a great perspective on Tokyo and Asia as a whole. But yeah, he's For got sure. a great perspective on. It. I love talking with him about stuff like that. Yep, absolutely. Especially after we'd had uh, uh, Robotic Grill before we recorded the episodes, <laughs> we went through that whole conversation. <laughs> Very All timely. Right, so, so what's your um, what's your favorite credit card? What's your go to card in your wallet? Um, I have the Amex Platinum card, and that's my favorite. It's the one I carry all the time, just because Philadelphia's got a Centurion Lounge. Um, so I. I've used it a number of times, um, the Uber credits and yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to get under 524 now. Mm-hmm. So I, I've been cooling it a little bit, uh, with open up credit cards. So, you know, MX platinum is the one and it's going to stay for a while. So for those of you that don't know what 524 is, uh, Chase has this requirement where you can only apply for five cards every 24 months. And that's, uh, across most banks and most cards and so some of the folks in 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 our line of work slash hobby who apply for a lot of cards have to think judiciously about what the next card is that we want to apply for uh, so as not to run up against those boundaries for sure and i'd say the next card that we'll get after the amex platinum may or may not be the city advantage um executive mastercard so just because i fly american a lot it's probably better off you know if i have the admiral's club nearby and i can hop in there I had that card for a number of years, the decade that I was exec plat. Um, so you've mentioned a, a handful of times of, uh, your travel on American. Would you consider them your favorite airline? I'd say so. Um, you know, just growing up, I flew U.S. Airways a lot. So I'm just a creature of habit. And, you know, uh, coincidentally, my worst flight experience was actually on Delta. No fault of their own. Mm-hmm. I love Delta. It was great, you know, but it just happened to be that was my worst experience. We were delayed in the airplane for about three hours Ugh. waiting to get de-iced during a flurry storm uh, when they only had about three de-icers for all the departures on a Friday. So, But love Delta. They handled a great, um, great airline by Lake American. Yeah, I, I have I have immense amounts of sympathy for anybody who uh, grew up on U.S. Airways, but that's just me, <laughs> especially on those Thank old airplanes. Thank you. At somebody bus. does. <laughs> Favorite hotel chain? Starwood. Well, now Marriott. But oh, Starwood. yeah, I know. It's yeah. killer. Every time, every time somebody says Starwood, no, wait, Marriott, I get a little hiccup in my throat. Yep. Yep. Starwood for sure. Yeah, me too. Uh, well, I say Hyatt's probably my favorite, but I, yeah, I really grew up cutting my teeth on Starwood as well, and I'm still a little a little nervous about the yeah. the Marriott merger. How do you feel about the merger? Um, I think it's going to be fine. It's, you know, more options, and I think that they – are really listening to us as travelers and I think that they want to do right by us. So I'm, I'm optimistic about it. I would say that that is probably the most optimistic view that I've heard. From <laughs> no, I mean, it, I'm I, an I, optimist. Think I think that's, I think that's fair. I'm, I'm buck saying, the trend. <laughs> not, not saying you're wrong. I just, I think most folks, and I guess maybe because they're Starwood purists, um, really, uh, are really scared of what Marriott's going to do as opposed to emphasizing the positives. And there have been positives, no question. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've gone to Marriott properties where I've been treated better there than at Starwood properties. So, you know, it's kind of a toss up for me. Yeah. Awesome. Well, great. Well, thanks for hanging out with us uh, here in Philadelphia, as you like to say, the city of brotherly love. That's right. Uh, when you're not hanging out with us in the Now Boarding Podcast, tell folks where they can find you. Uh, so I'm most active. I have a Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram account, but I'm most active on Twitter at the Short Final. And Instagram, the short final blog. I've yet to get the short final handle, <laughs> um, but I'm working on it. But it's the short final blog on Instagram and the short final on Twitter. And tell me, did you put the pictures of the pizzas on your Instagram feed? Because they looked awesome in the post. Um, yes. Awesome. So you can catch them out on there. Yeah, I, I'm one of those weird folks that loves looking at pictures of, of pizza. Not just food, but, but pizza. But live vicariously. You live vicariously through you <laughs> eating your way across Italy. <laughs> Thanks for being on with us. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Now Boarding Podcast. Now Boarding Podcast.